Neymar is one of the greatest players of the past decade. The man's a superstar, and that is hardly a controversial opinion, if you think it is. Get out! He has his flaws, but the man is brilliant. And when you factor in his humble upbringing and rise to the top, you gain an extra layer of admiration for him. But this video isn't about Neymar. That'll soon come. Once upon a time, there was another Brazilian wonder kid who coincidentally rose up alongside Ney. And at the time, it was a very common opinion that this boy would have a similar, maybe even a greater rise than PSG's current number 10. A man who was more frequently compared to Zidane, Kaká, Recalme, and all the other greats far more than any other youth prospects that I can remember. And if you weren't around to see him in his youth or simply don't know who the man is, believe me, the hype was real. Paulo Enrique Chagas de Lima, or simply Ganzo, Goose in Portuguese. The man had it all, a bright future, a wand of a left foot, and insane talents to boot. But the actual unraveling of his story wasn't so uplifting. And unfortunately, it's a rather familiar story for those that were once wonder kids, but never quite hit the mark. Injuries, laziness, regret. Today, we're going to talk about it. So with that being said, what happened to Ganzo? Yo, what's up guys, hope you're all doing well. This channel has been criminally lacking stories on Brazilians thus far. And for that, you all have my humblest apologies. We're gonna change that in the coming weeks. This week, we're looking into the story of one of Brazil's many extremely hyped child prodigies over the past few decades and what went wrong. So let's jump right in. Born in 1989 in Ananindewa, Brazil, Gunzo was a gifted boy from a very young age. He took up football seriously at 7 years of age, and by 15, he was part of the prestigious Santos Academy. By 2008, he had made his professional debut and Brazil, as well as the footballing world en masse, was adamant that they had found the next best thing. And his rise to stardom really was quite remarkable. In the intro, I spoke about how the hype was real. because. It was. There were people that hadn't even watched him play that were convinced that Brazil had a world beater on the cards. I may have been one of those people, but I mean, we don't talk about that. Nevertheless, based on what this man was doing in his youth, all the people that were praising him were right. A tall, graceful attacking midfielder that, for all intents and purposes, was something of a throwback to a time in football where the number 10 reigned supreme. He operated in the hole, just behind the forwards, and just had that ability to receive the ball, retain it under pressure, and distribute at will. A smooth operator that made it look like the game was being played in slow motion as he dictated play. Then, one year later, Neymar entered the first team setup. And alongside one another, their career trajectories skyrocketed. Gunzo would serve it up, spread the play, and split defenses, and Neymar would confuse the opposition, jet past defenders, and finish. The two were the brightest of stars in Santos, and it probably helped that they were extremely close back then too, which is something that many people were surprised by back then. There is a three-year gap between them, and before teaming up for Santos in 2009, they had only ever shared the pitch once or twice in youth fixtures. I guess, I guess they just hit it off. And if you need further proof of their friendship, Gunzo is the godfather of Neymar's son and was present at his birth. Which is a funny story in itself, as former Santos manager Muriti Ramalo once recalled, When Neymar found out his son would be born, they broke into my room late at night asking me to release them from the training session. Neymar deserved it. Of course I would never say no to a request like that. But taking the godfather with him? I had never seen that in my life. I still think it was an excuse from Gunzo not to train, but that's alright. They were amazing kids and came back to play later that week. However, while that is a pretty harmless and light-hearted quote, that last point proved to hold long-standing merit in the years to come. But before that, Gunzo would go on to enter his prime. The year is 2010. At 20 and 18 years of age, Gunzo and Neymar are absolutely bossing it in their native Brazil. And you know what else happened in 2010, right? A little thing called the World Cup. It happens every four years. Waka waka, you know the deal. In the eyes of several Brazilians, both Neymar and Gunzo simply had to be on that plane to South Africa. And it was actually kind of mad. There were billboards begging Brazil coach Dunga to include the two youngsters. A TV crew camped outside Dunga's house to request that they were included. Even the former president of Brazil was calling for them to be included prior to a presidential campaign. 
I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's a decent way to endear yourself to the people. However, neither of them ended up going to the World Cup. And perhaps they didn't miss out on much as Brazil crashed out in the quarterfinals. In any case, if there was ever any point in his career where the world was quite literally his oyster, it would be the years 2010 and 2011. Gunzo was the talk of the town and everyone heavily believed that he was bound for Europe any day now. Paulo Henrique is the greatest player that Brazil has produced in the last 10 years. If Santos holds Gunzo, there will be a team until he stops playing. You can sell the whole team, but hold him because he makes the team play. The words of Brazil legend Socrates. He won the 2010 Copa do Brasil and was even named the player of the tournament. He won the 2011 Copa Libertadores. And naturally, there was interest abroad, particularly in the form of Manchester City, who were heavily vying for both his and Neymar's signature. But no dice. I don't want to play for them. I'd rather play for a big team in Europe such as AC Milan, Barcelona and Real Madrid. Gunzo said this in 2010. We can only imagine that, despite the huge foreign investment, he looked at City's four decade long trophy drought when making this statement. But if he could just look only two years in the future, well, you know. Aguero! Anyway, he also got his Celestial debut in this period and was even selected for the 2011 Copa America, starting every match in Brazil's campaign. And despite yet another quarterfinals exit, he played alright. But as peaks go, it was pretty much all downhill from there. And like most stories of this nature, there were several reasons why. By the time he was 21, Gunzo had been being hyped for years, and it seemed as though even he was buying into the hype as he was even quoted on record agreeing to comparisons between him and the likes of Zidane. Maybe that had something to do with his downfall, but I don't really want to believe that. You can't expect anyone to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself, I guess. I skipped past this earlier, but in 2010, Gunzo suffered a nasty cruciate ligament injury on his left knee that sidelined him for months. In 2007, he also suffered a nasty injury and had surgery on his right knee. Another thing I failed to mention earlier was that Gunzo might have been silky smooth, calm, collected and composed on the ball, but he was also pretty immobile. I Im immobile. Im he didn't move that much. Let's just say pressing was a foreign concept. His injuries obviously contributed to this aspect of his game later on, but if we're being real, the problem was already there before the injuries occurred. By 2012, instead of going to Europe like many had predicted, he made the switch across town to Sao Paulo for about 9 million euros. While he was there, his form went up and down frequently, but he unfortunately never got back to the form that made him a household name in Brazil ever again. Something that's evidenced by the fact that, since 2012, he's been called up once or twice, but he's failed to make even a single appearance for the national team. Meanwhile, only one year later, his buddy Neymar moved over to Barcelona for 86 million euros, almost 10 times that fee. Remember, many people believe that it was Gunzo and not Neymar that would break transfer records and set the world alight. Crazy how things worked out. But Goose would eventually get his chance abroad. Teams were understandably reluctant to bring the playmaker over due to his work rates, but after catching some hot form in 2015, Jorge Sampaoli over at Sevilla was willing to take the risk. 9.5 million euros later and Gunzo made his dream move in 2016. Now, several people had already clocked out from following Gunzo's progression by then. Another wasted talent, right? But once the world caught wind of his seemingly long overdue European adventure, they started to pay attention again. However, Dutch legend Clarence Seedorf already knew what was about to happen and let the world know back in 2013 when he was plying his trade in Brazil. I see him moving too slowly on the playing field, and I fear that at this pace in Europe, it would not work. He was right. Apart from a few highlight reel moments, some flicks, some tricks, Gunzo failed to leave his mark. Two seasons at Sevilla, 18 appearances. Next up was a loan spell at Amiens in 2018 where, yet again, Neymar and Goose would play in the same league. However, Neymar was playing for these guys and Gunzo was playing for these guys. This move was also a dud. And in 2019, after a failed European adventure, he returned to Brazil with Fluminense. And if you thought that this video would end with the story of his retirement, no, he's, he's still active. He's actually only 32. However, 
I think it's safe to say that his best days in football are well and truly behind him. Realistically, Gunzo had a more than decent career. We obviously all like to single out players that don't perform to our expectations, but we also often forget how hard it was for them to get into the position that they're in in the first place. 99.999% of all boys that want to be football players when they grow up never make it. But Gunzo did, and rightly so. He even won his fair share of silverware. However, at the same time, the man that was once upon a time considered his equal went on to become the most expensive player in history and a runaway success story. They obviously aren't the same player, but it's hard to argue that they didn't have the same opportunities. It's a real shame. But perhaps I'm being harsh. Perhaps I'm just bitter as I was one of those guys that watched from afar over a decade ago hoping that this guy would live up to the hype. Perhaps, in the words of 1970 World Cup winner Tostao, I miss a version of Gunzo that never existed. Let me know what you guys think of this man's career. Hope you all enjoyed. Cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.